What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick. Today we're going to be learning about 22 Bamboo Studio tips. We're going to be improving our print quality. We're going to be saving some time. We're going to be saving some filament. You're not going to want to miss it. And as always, this is a no fluff video, so let's get right to it. The next set of tips will come in handy if you ever decide to tackle a large project like this Battle Guys toy from Toymaker. They have some pretty amazing models for sale. I'll drop a link down below so you can go check them out. So this is all the files laid out in Bamboo Studio. Now as you can see I've grouped all my plates all by color. But one thing that I didn't do is group them by print settings. Let's take this plate here for example so I can explain what I mean. If I zoom in and rotate around, you can see we have some large models laying flat on the build plate and some that are standing quite tall. This model here isn't very rigid at all. I would be willing to bet it would fail without proper bed adhesion. So instead of adding another plate and moving it, I can simply dive into each model's individual settings and properly set them up. If we switch from the global tab here in the process menu to the objects tab, you're going to see the settings down below change. The first thing that I would like to do is set some brim ears to our flat model. This should be sufficient enough for them. The first thing that I need to do is click on that model. Now since that we're in the objects mode, any changes that I make down here in the settings will only adjust for that specific model. I'll go ahead and go into the others tab first, change our brim type from auto to painted. Now let's go ahead and click on the brim ears button here in the top menu. You're going to see all the rest of the models disappear. I like to use a head diameter of 10 or more. Make your adjustment, hit the auto generate points button and you will now see brim ears show up. Great, hit escape to go back. Let's go ahead and verify that the other models don't have the same brim ears applied. Click on one of the models and you'll see that the brim type is set to auto and not painted like our last model. Now let's go ahead and add a brim to all three of the taller models to give us a better chance of a successful print. Holding down on the control button on the keyboard, click all three sets of the models to make sure that they're all highlighted. Next down in the others tab, change the brim settings to outer brim only and set that width to eight. I personally would rather lay down a few extra grams of brim filament to save myself a headache of a failed print at 90%. Great, now that we have one set of models printing with a brim and the others with just some brim ears, let's go ahead and hit preview to slice the plate and take a look. And as you can see, all of our tall models have a brim and the flat model doesn't. Now this method also applies to your model's wall amounts, infill density, supports, and a ton of other options. Let's go ahead and go back to the prepare tab and make one more adjustment so that you can see this in action. Since this middle model looks like it could be under a little bit more stress than our flat panels, let's go ahead and bump up the infill density to this model to give it some more strength. Highlight just the middle model by itself, and then down in the settings menu, make sure you click on the frequent tab and change the infill density. You can even bump up the wall loops to let's say three. Now we have a model that's going to be a little bit more rigid than the rest of them. Tip number two, print sequence. Let's move on to the next feature, which will come in handy and may save you some time. Now, as you can see, there are over 100 models to be printed to complete this project. Let's say we happen to miss two models and they need to be printed in two different colors. Now, the first thought would be to simply print one model, wait for that to finish, then print the other model. Or there's actually a better way of doing this without having to change colors for every single layer. We can print both models separately, one at a time, for a single print. With the Objects tab still selected, click on the build plate itself. You will see the plate settings appear. If you change the print sequence from by layer to by object, we will now see a bounding box around each model. This box represents the path of the tool head. So what we need to do is move them far enough apart so that the printer won't ever collide with the other model. And it will print these little hinge models in brown first, then switch to the purple color and print the entire model second. As you can see, once I move the purple model away, we're now ready to print both models one at a time. Now again, you can simply apply the model settings just as we did in the last exercise, infill density, brim, and so on. Tip number three, set the filament print sequence for better first layer color transition. In multicolor or multi-material prints, the order in which the filament is printed, especially in the first layer, can have a big impact on the print quality. One of the biggest benefits of customizing the filament print sequence is getting cleaner transitions where colors meet. When two colors touch at an edge, the print order can have an effect on how sharp and messy the edge looks. For the cleanest first layer, a good rule of thumb is to print the lighter colors first, then darker colors. This helps prevent darker filaments from bleeding into the lighter areas, keeping the edges crisp. The way you do this in Bamboo Studio, click on the gear icon next to the build plate. This opens up the plate settings window, 
where you can customize a print order for both first layer and the layers that follow. For the first layer, these are the two options, auto and customize. When set to auto, Bamboo Studio chooses the order automatically. It takes the color sequence set up in the AMS over here on the side menu. If you want full control, choose the customize option. This lets you manually set the order of the first layer by dragging and dropping the colors into the order you prefer. This gives you the flexibility to fine tune the look of your first layer for sharper results, especially when two colors meet side by side. Drag the lightest color in your list to the left into the position number one, then the next lightest, and so on and so forth, going from light to dark. Once you're done, hit OK and you're ready to go. Tip number four, support settings for easy removal. Trust me, there are a lot of settings in the support tab. Changing just a few of them can make a big difference on how easy they can be removed. Let's quickly go over five settings that I use for better support removal. Remember that these are not the be all for support settings. Different filament types and even brands will make a difference in the outcome that you get. Use these settings as a guide to understand what your printer is doing when creating supports. Then make an intelligent adjustment when you run into a filament that's giving you issues. All right, let's get right to it. First, let's make sure that advanced mode is turned on. This will reveal all of the support settings. So if I had to choose just one setting to adjust for easier support removal, it would definitely be the top Z distance. This setting has the most impact on your support removal. The default should be set to 0 0.20. Using a 0.24 is a good option to start with, but I recommend anywhere between 0.23 to 0.25 is where you want to be. Now when your printer is laying down supports, it has what is called an interface layer. This is an isolated set of layers that is printed right before it reaches the area where it connects to your model. The default is set to two. I tend to always use three layers. This is always important to give your printer sufficient material to ensure good weight support for your model. Now, if you happen to have an AMS, we can take this even one step further, which is going to make a huge difference. If you don't mind a little bit longer print time, you can change your support interface material. For example, if you're printing your model with PLA, you can use PETG for the support interface. Since PETG doesn't stick to PLA and vice versa, it is a great way to create a support interface between your model and your support. Now, once you choose an opposite material, such as PETG for your interface, Bamboo Studio will give you a suggestion. It wants you to change your Z distance to zero, change your interlace rectilinear pattern, and disable independent support layer height. I have always used this suggestion, and it's given me great results. Bamboo Studio is trying to create zero clearance and a better support pattern, so it's a good idea to use their suggestion. If you do use the interface material setting, then the rest of these settings don't need to be applied. Support tip number four is the top interface spacing. I set this to a 0.12. This setting essentially is a horizontal spacing between the interface pattern lines. The last setting for better support removal is going to be the object XY distance. Now this is going to be the distance of your support material from your model on the X and Y plane. Here is a great image from the Bamboo Wiki that shows you exactly what I'm talking about. Think of it as the distance of your tree support and how far away they are spaced from your model. I've had plenty of instances where the side of the tree supports get stuck to my model, especially when printing very organic models such as dinosaur bones. The default is usually set to 0.2. You can use a value of 0.35 or 0.4 for this. Tip number nine. Support expansion for more sturdy supports. This next tip is one of my most favorite on the list. I have seen a ton of new makers asking advice as to why their print failed, and I can clearly see their supports detached from the build plate. Even I was guilty of this when I first started. So let's fix those failed prints. First, go into the support tab. Make sure you have the advanced mode turned on. Now in the advanced section, you will see a feature called initial layer expansion. This is basically like the brim for your supports. When I'm printing a model that is very tall, I don't give my print an opportunity to fail. So I set this option to around eight. And in some cases, I've even used 10 or more. Now remember, the main cause for adhesion problems is usually from a dirty build plate. Always make sure you clean it if you notice first layer adhesion problems. There's some other methods, some people laugh, but taking some cheap hairspray and hitting your build plate very quickly, the hairspray dries out any excess oil on the build plate. And I have given this many tests and it just always works. And it's just another way of keeping your build plate free of oils. Tip number 10, export as STL. If you ever have loaded 50 models into Bamboo Studio and need to send one or multiple models to another printer, but that printer happens to be set up in the Orca Slicer, then this tip is for you. Trust me, this has happened to me many times. 
I have many different manufacturers of printers and I don't use Bamboo Studio 100% of the time. The best way to accomplish this is to select your model, right click and choose export as one STL. This will allow you to save it somewhere quick like your desktop, then load it into Orca Slicer or whatever slicer you need. This just makes it easy so you don't have to hunt around to your STL folders looking for that exact model. I have saved a ton of time doing this and thought you might too. Tip number 11, quickly change filament color. If you have an AMS with your printer, here's a quick way to change your filament color of your model. First, make sure your colors are synced correctly over here in the left main settings area. Then click on your model. The number next to each color corresponds to the number on your keyboard. So hitting two on the keyboard will change the color next to the number two in the AMS right here. Number three and number four, so on and so forth. I hope that saves you some time. Tip number 12, changing infill density with modifiers. This is a trick that I used in a previous video of mine and it goes into way more detail. So if this is something that you're interested in, I recommend you check that video out. You can change a specific section of the infill density of your model by adding a modifier to it. Let's take this vase for example. Let's say you would like to increase the density at the bottom because you've experienced water leakage. I, I don't know, something like that. I'm just making this up for my own example. Well, if you right click on the model, then go to add modifier, then cylinder. Now let's go ahead and resize it to overlay around the bottom portion of the model. Now, if you switch over to the objects tab, you can see a generic cylinder. That is our modifier object. Under the print settings down below, change the infill density to 50%. Now every part of your model that's inside this modifier cylinder will print at 50%. You can of course change any settings in each of the tabs and will also affect that area within the modifier. Tip number 13, keyboard shortcuts for moving models. Using the keyboard arrows allow you to move models around on your build plate by 10 millimeters in each direction. Holding down the shift and now your model will move just one millimeter in that direction. Tip number 14, place a straight seam on your model fast. If you've ever wanted to place a seam on your model in a specific spot, you can of course use the seam painting tool. But to take your workflow one step further, instead of drawing an entire line and having the seam that isn't perfectly straight, simply just click at the top of the model and Bamboo Studio will draw the seam in perfectly straight down the model. Pretty cool, right? Tip number 15, fixing filament discoloration due to speed. This is one issue that tends to pop up every once in a while. With so many intricate models in this toy maker project, I knew I would run into it. So have you ever noticed a slight bending on some of your models? You will have sections that print in a matte finish, then for a specific set of layers, you'll get a completely different finish, causing what looks like banding on your model. This issue is caused by the settings in your filament. Let's take a look at this model. And if I slice it, then switch to speed in the drop-down menu, you will see that there's a different color in the exact same location where I'm having my banding issues. Since we switched our drop down menu to speed, we now know that this issue is being caused by a speed setting. The fix, click the three dots icon next to your filament and then hit edit. Now switch over to the cooling tab. There are two ways to fix this. First, if you uncheck slow printing down for better layer cooling option, it will completely remove the change in the speed which is causing the problem. The other option is the layer time next to the max fan speed threshold. This will allow you to fine tune the problem slightly if you run into issues when turning off the slow printing down feature. Currently the setting is set to eight. If I reduce it down to two, it almost completely removes the banding. I encourage you to experiment with these settings when you happen to run into the same issue yourself. Tip number 16, slow down your tall prints. In the device tab, click on the speed icon and change it to silent. This will reduce your print speed by 50%. I've used this several times to save some very tall, thin prints. Tip number 17, use the lock icon to track your prints. Jumping into a large print project can get overwhelming quickly, especially when you happen to lose track of where you're at with your printing. What I tend to do is lock down the plate using the icon once I send it to the printer. This will prevent me from accidentally sending the same plate to another printer by accident. And trust me, I've been there before. Tip number 18, cutting filament at an angle for smoother AMS insert. 
If you ever run into a problem with your AMS or your AMS light not accepting your filament and it feels like it's getting stuck, rather than continuously trying to get it accepted by the AMS, simply cut a tip in your filament at an angle. This allows for a much smoother loading of the filament into the AMS. Tip number 19, ironing calibration test. Are you trying to get the smoothest top layer by using the ironing feature? Well, rather than trying a few recommended settings, which could be hit and miss because all filaments are different, why not give this ironing calibration test a shot? This will show you exactly the settings your filament favors and gives you a more informed decision when choosing your ironing settings. I'll be sure to drop a link down below. Tip number 20, export your Fusion 360 files directly into Bamboo Studio. If you're someone that loves creating your own designs, there is a really slick integration into Fusion 360. Before I started using this feature, I would have to export my file to the desktop as like an STL file. Open up Bamboo Studio, then import the file in. Well, using the 3D print utility, now you can export your designs from Fusion directly into Bamboo Studio. Over in the Utilities tab, click on the 3D print utility. Now change the preparation type to Print Utility. Under Application, make sure Bamboo Studio is selected. Next, select the model you want to export. Choose the format. I suggest using 3MF file, and then boom. Fusion sends the file directly to Bamboo Studio for printing. Tip number 21, variable layer height. If you're looking to improve the quality of your prints, then this tip is sure to put a fat grin on your face. I'm talking about variable layer height. I will show you a quick demonstration of how this works because I have a complete tutorial that goes into all the details for you and is already published. Link down below. Variable layer height lets the 3D printer use thicker layers in some parts of your print and thinner layers in others. Thicker layers print faster, but have less detail. Thinner layers take longer, but capture more detail. Bamboo Studio can automatically adjust the layer height based on the shape of your model. For example, flat areas get thicker layers to save time, while curved or detailed areas get thinner layers so they look smoother. This way, you can get a print that's both fast and high quality without having to choose just one. Let's go ahead and use this half round circle for our example. First, I'll slice it without variable layer height turned on. If you've ever printed something round, you'll probably notice visible layer lines, especially near the top center where it can start to look like a dartboard. Next, I'll turn on variable layer height and slide the control all the way to the left so you can see the effect. Once I click the adaptive button, watch how the model changes. What Bamboo Studio is doing here is automatically adjusting the layer height as it moves towards the top of the shape. This helps smooth out the lines and gives you a much cleaner finish at the top. If you want a much deeper dive into how this works, be sure to check out my full layer height video, link down below. All right, we're finally here. Tip number 22, fuzzy skin painting. New for Bamboo Studio 2.2, we have a great feature called fuzzy skin painting. Now fuzzy skin has been around for quite some time, but you've never had control over it like you do now. The new fuzzy skin painting feature allows you to take a model like this horse sculpture and give it a really nice artistic look. Once you open up the fuzzy skin painting tool, you'll be presented with some options that look exactly like the paint tools. First, let me select the paint bucket icon. Next, I'll lower the smart fill angle down just a little bit. This will allow me to isolate certain sections of the model. Any portion of the model that I paint with the fuzzy skin option will apply the fuzzy skin feature straight to it. Once you're happy with the way you painted your fuzzy skin, you can give your model a quick slice to see it in action. While this is a great feature, there is still a ton of work that needs to be done. The paint feature won't allow you to make changes to how you want the fuzzy skin to look. There are some really great ways to get some cool textures with fuzzy skin. If fuzzy skin is something you really like, then I definitely recommend you check out my Orca Slicer tutorial. Orca has a ton of fuzzy skin options that will give you a wide range of cool textures. And I'll drop the link down below. Alright, that wraps up our 22 Bamboo Studio Tips video. I really hope that these help you in your 3D printing journey. Let me know in the comments below. And if you happen to have a favorite tip, let me know. Maybe I'll feature it in a future video. Also, if you'd like to watch my full Bamboo Studio tutorial, it's over an hour long, fully packed. You can check it out right here. And if you'd like to watch my video on variable layer height, you can also check that out right here. All right. Again, my name is Nick. I hope you're having a great day. And as always, happy printing.